Let's let y equal 1 over x. Okay. So, I can write dy on dx equals, and then I'm going to introduce my limit notation just like I had here. So I'm going to say the limit as h approaches 0. Now, I'm deliberately doing this different to the ones we did this morning because I can't right now just recite this. Why can't I just write that as it is on the right hand side? There's no f's, there's no f's, right? So if I wanted to do that, I would have to say, let that be f of x, and then I could use this notation. But I don't need to, it's cool. I've written down the definition. Now I'm just going to apply it to this guy, okay? What is, what, is, what am I gonna get for this when I put in x plus h into the function? It'll be one over x plus h, right? I'm just substituting x plus h wherever I saw x. So that's what I get on the numerator, okay? That's the first bit. I'm also going to take away fx, which in this case is, I should say y, okay? Because I, I don't have an f. Um, the denominator is always the same, it just stays h. Okay, now in previous questions, uh, in the exercise we were doing earlier, all you basically had to do was expand whatever thing you had over here. You'd have a square or a cubic or even a power of four if you got to that question. You just expand it all out, stuff cancels. There's nothing to expand here. So what would you like me to do instead? I, I have two fractions. Maybe I should just subtract them. What will I need to do in order to subtract them? What do I need between these two fractions? I need a common denominator, right? I'm going to write the limit. Why am I writing the limit again? Because I want the tangent, not the secant, okay? Um, the common denominator that's going to be useful to me is x times x plus h. Like that. What am I going to get on the numerators? Well, this thing will turn into an x. Is that right? And this will turn into an x plus h. How does it look? Do, can, I, can I do fractions? That's OK. I could divide that whole thing by h, but I hate writing fractions on fractions because it's just messy. So I'm just going to write it like that. It's just a little more concise. Are you happy so far? OK. While I'm at it, I'm also going to point out just like I showed over here, right? This is d1 and dx that I'm calculating, right? That I'm evaluating. That's d on dx of y. But I know what y is. It's this. So this is another way, again, this is how you use this differential operator. You see, I'm applying it to this function, okay? So these all mean the same thing on the left-hand side, just like these all mean the same thing on the right-hand side. Okay. Do you write as d on dx squared? No. We'll come to dx squared a little bit later on. It does mean something, but not that. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm writing it as two separate fractions. Um, it's an operator. It's an operator. So it's doing something to this. It's not simply multiplying across. We'll come to that in a bit, a bit of time. Can someone help me simplify this fraction that I get here? What have I got? Yeah, Eric. Well, on the top, the x's cancel out. Good. Which leaves you with? with h. What's with the h? Sorry, minus h. Good. On, um, well... Yep, the denominator hasn't changed, has it? Yeah, then right? you put like x, h, x plus h. Like Say it again. Um, you, you could put x times h times x plus h, and then cross out the h. Wait, oh, you're talking about this h? Yeah. This h over here? Okay, I'm, I'm going to write that down as a separate thing over here. One of the reasons why is because when you're doing these questions, um, later on, like this process, you will actually get to leave behind, which is nice because it is quite long and drawn out. So in this particular time when we do want you to pay attention to the process, it's really important you have every line there and you don't skip too much. Often we'll actually give you the derivative and we don't want you to actually, like getting the answer is not the point. We want to see if you understand the machinery that gets you there. Okay. So hence me not cancelling. Now I am ready to cancel, having evaluated this numerator. So that leaves me with the limit as h approaches 0 of what? Negative 1 over? How does that look? Does that look okay? At this point, 
I can actually do, I can actually see what happens when h really gets to zero, which I couldn't do before, right? The top's just going to be negative one. What do you get down the bottom? You just get x squared, right? x times x plus zero. So lo and behold, we have an answer here. But I want us to think, what does this answer mean? Can you help me just draw like a rough one over x graph? Just draw it beside here. It doesn't have to be huge. You get the idea. Okay, now remember what it is that we've just found out. Remember what it is that we just found out. This apparently is the gradient function, the derivative of this guy over here. What does that mean? Well, let's just test out a value. Let's just test out a value. So I could say when x equals, give me a number. Sure. <laughs> when x equals 4, okay, what's the derivative going to be equal to? I'm just going to evaluate it. It's going to be minus 1 over 4 squared, which in this case is 16. Now, tell me, tell me how would you describe a line with a gradient of minus 1 over 16? What does the minus tell you? It's decreasing, it's decreasing. What about the 1 over 16? What does that tell you? Uh, it's, it's small, which means shallow, right? Which makes sense, because where would x, on, where would x equal 4 be? Uh, somewhere over here, right? And you can see, of course, it's very shallow. And as x gets bigger and bigger, what happens to the gradient? The gradient gets smaller and smaller. It gets closer to zero. Of course it does, because what's it approaching? It's approaching an asymptote, right? What about a small value of x? What about a small value of x? Say x equals 1 over 100. x equals 1 over 100. In this case, what will the derivative be? Look, let's just evaluate this thing. You've got a minus 1 on the top. And then on the bottom, you've got 1 over 100 squared, right? What do I do with this? What does this mean? The, the negative is not going anywhere, but this is a fraction on a, on a fraction, right? You're taking the reciprocal, so I'm pretty sure that's negative 100 squared, isn't it? Negative 10,000. Does that make sense? What does that mean? It's negative, it's still decreasing. In fact, the astute among you will have noticed, it's always decreasing. There's no value of x you can put in here that changes the sign of this, so it's always decreasing. And this is really steep, right? Of course it's steep. Because why? Why is it so steep? Because again, it's approaching an asymptote, it's a different kind of asymptote. Do you see that? It's vertical here, which is why if I went closer and closer and closer, I'm going to get these really <laughs> steep gradients. You can see lastly, why is it negative all the time, right? Even if you put in negative values over here, this is decreasing, and this is decreasing. Does it make sense? 